Hello everyone and welcome back to the Amped YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the latest release of Amped 5. In this update video, I'll be taking you through the main parts of this release. This includes importing Amped Replay projects into 5, the ability to load subtitles, saving and loading convert DVR configurations, and finally enabling multi-thread decoding. The topics we'll cover in this update video isn't everything that's included in the update. If you want a full extensive list of what's going in the update, make sure to check out the blog post that will be coming out at the same time. Okay, so let's start this video off by taking a look at the import amped replay project. To access this function in 5, we just need to choose the amped replay logo in the top left and when we do this it's going to ask us to import a amped replay project but before we take a look at the project in five let's take a quick look at that project in replay and then we can see how that transfers over to five without losing any of the functions or any of the actions we've carried out on that file Okay, so let's quickly take a look at the replay project in replay just to see what we've done to it. And then I'll show you how that imports into five. So I'm just going to open replay here. And you can see that we've got um, a simple video here. If I quickly go through it, you can see that it's interlaced and the aspect ratio is incorrect. So in the enhance tab, you can see that I use the correct for the interlacing. And then we change the aspect ratio to 16.9 and we applied a sharpen to it. So what we'll do now is we'll take a look at this in five. So if we go to that Amped Replay import button and we can see we've got that same replay project here so I'm just going to open this and you'll see that it's loaded that replay project in and it's automatically added the filters that we used in replay or the five equivalent of those filters so we've got the video loader we have the deinterlace, the aspect ratio at 16.9, the unsharp masking, and in replay we also had a range selector which I put just to cover the frames where we can see the license plate. That's so. so it's as simple as that to bring your replay projects into 5. This is going to be a great way for working within your departments, especially if you've got a unit that's dealing with the simpler cases at the replay level. They can quickly pass on any complex cases to the five users in the department by simply just sharing the replay project. This will also work for annotations, so both replay and five have the capability of applying annotations to videos and images. So if you do annotate a video or an image in replay, that will also transfer over to the five project. Now we're gonna take a look at a new filter that we're introducing into five in this update. And this filter is the load subtitle filter. For a long time in five, we've been able to load timestamps onto our video. But recently there's been an increase in different video formats using the subtitle stream to display or save timestamp information. This subtle difference would cause issues in formatting when trying to load the file in load timestamp or it wouldn't load at all. So now we have a new filter to overcome this. The load subtitle filter, for example, will load timestamps correctly for video formats like Axon and DJI. 
So let's take a look at how this will work for you in Five. So here you can see we've got a video loader and the load subtitle filter here. And in this subtitle file, we've got the timestamp information for this video. Now the problem that we would face if we would try to load this using load timestamp is that in the subtitle stream, you've got these formatting tags. So you can see here we've got these formatting tags that would show. And if we look at this in the text editor, you can see them quite clearly here, the font size um, tags here. So by adding the load subtitle instead, so what we can do is use this remove formatting tags here. And by default, this is going to be on for you. Okay, next we're going to cover something that has been highly requested, and that is the ability to save and load convert DVR settings. In this version of 5, you are now going to be able to save and load different configurations for convert DVR. I'll show you how this works using 5. So if we go to our convert DVR settings, you can see now at the bottom of our window, we've got load configuration and save configuration. So anyone that's used convert DVR before will know that there's so many different configurations you can use when converting videos. Here you can see we've got only selected file and transcode as the settings. And in the transcode, I'm just going to change this to a MKV uh, H265. What I'm going to do now then is choose our new save configuration button. And you'll see that I get the option to save this configuration in the folder that I want to save it in. So let's just do config one and save. And I'm just going to quick cancel for now. If I go back to convert DVR and go back to transcode, you can see that right now the configuration has uh, gone back to default. So I can now go to that load configuration, go to config one, and it's going to load those previous options that I set. This is going to be great for sending configurations to other people or to save a certain configuration for a certain format that you come across a lot and you know that these convert options are the best options for that uh, video format. Finally, I'm going to show you something that I'm very excited to be enabled into 5 and it's something that I saw after back when I was a user. And that's multi-thread decoding. So the ability to use multiple threads from your CPU to increase the performance of five. So I'm sure in the past we've all experienced moments in five where the playback is quite slow, especially when we go to full HD video or further when we start looking at 4K video within five. And this was an issue with uh, how Five was decoding the video using a single core from the CPU. Now, originally we had only single core use because we wanted Five to be accessible to everyone around the world. Um, but now that CPUs are becoming cheaper and the technology is advanced, multi-threading is a lot more common around the world now. So with this in mind, we've enabled the ability to use multiple threads from your CPU up to a maximum of 16. This is going to drastically improve performance when you're playing videos back, especially when you start going to the 4K and above level. Okay, so here we can see that we've got a 4K video. You can see that we've got 3840 by 2160 in our information here. And I've currently set the video playback to use a single thread, a single core. So if we play this video, 
you can see that it's quite slow and jittery in the playback. It's not a smooth playback as we're going through this video. Now, if you want to change the settings for the multi-thread ability, you want to go to view and to program options. And in here at the bottom, you can see number of decoder threads. Now, the two options that you're most likely going to use is either taking it to the full 16, if you have 16 threads available in your CPU, or you can leave it at zero. If the setting is at zero, what will happen is five will just automatically use as maximum amount of threads available to it from your system up to 16. So I'm going to leave it at zero. And now when I play back the video, you'll see that the videos got a little bit smoother in its playback. It's not as jittery and jumpy as it was before. Everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you're excited for the new updates coming to five. Don't forget to update your software. If you do have any questions about any of the updates, make sure to reach out to us. And until next time, take care.